Welcome to this revision video on judicial controls of delegated legislation, which is usually the second question on delegated legislation. Two potential questions on control, and they're only one word different, so you need to make sure you read the question carefully and answer about the right type of control. The first question is about how Parliament controls delegated legislation. The other question is about the way the courts control delegated legislation. And as judges are found in the court, this is called judicial control. And that is the focus of this video. Whether you are answering on parliamentary or judicial control, always start with one or two sentences about why control of delegated legislation is needed. We know that over 3,000 statutory instruments are made each year, together with a large number of bylaws and orders in council. This delegated legislation is not looked at as carefully as bills in Parliament would be. Also, some of the bodies, such as public companies and the Privy Council, contain members who are not elected, so it is important to exercise control to ensure power is not abused. Judicial review is the name given to the process of reviewing delegated legislation. Judicial review cases are heard by High Court judges in the Queen's Bench Division. Judicial review proceedings consider whether the delegated legislation is lawful or not. Any individual can challenge the validity of delegated legislation, provided he or she is affected by it. The basis upon which delegated legislation can be challenged is that it is ultra vires. This means that it is made beyond the powers conferred by the Parent Act. If judicial review is successful, the delegated legislation is void. There are three grounds for judicial review, procedural, substantive and unreasonableness. Procedural ultraviaries looks at how the delegated legislation was made and whether the correct procedures in the Parent Act were followed. Each time you mention a ground for judicial review, it is important to give an example. The example of procedural ultraviaries is Aylesbury Mushroom, where the delegated legislation was held to be void as the correct procedure had not been followed, as the Minister had failed to consult the Mushroom Growers Association. Substantive ultraviaries means that the content of the delegated legislation is outside of the limits set by the Parent Act. Again, you will need a case example. In Attorney General, that's AG, v Fulham Corporation, the Parent Act allowed the corporation to provide facilities for washing clothes, but the corporation set up a commercial laundry. The court held this was substantive ultraviaries, as the Parent Act did not give permission to wash clothes for others. Lastly, you need to mention unreasonableness. This looks at whether a reasonable body would have taken the decision. Unreasonableness comes from the case called Wednesbury about opening a cinema on a Sunday, so it is known as Wednesbury unreasonableness. The case example for unreasonableness is Rogers v Swindon NHS Trust. In this case, the NHS Trust refused to provide a cancer drug to a woman because her case was not exceptional. The Court of Appeal held that this policy was unreasonable and therefore unlawful. The Trust had not given clear reasons why some people were allowed the drug and others were not. The normal remedies are available to a judge in a judicial review case. These are damages, which is compensation, an injunction to either compel or restrain an act, and also declaration, a declaration that something is unlawful. But in addition, there are three specific orders available for judicial review cases. And even if you could only remember one of these for the exam, then you will get an extra mark. The first one is an order for certiorari, which is a quashing order, which sets aside an unlawful ultraviaries decision. Secondly, an order for mandamus, which requires a body to do something. And lastly, an order for prohibition, which requires a public body to stop doing something. So, in summary, what you need to include is why are controls needed? What is judicial review? 
procedural ultraviaries with your example of Aylesbury mushroom, substantive ultraviaries with your example of Attorney General v Fulham Corporation, unreasonableness with the example of Rogers v Swindon, and lastly, the remedies available. Your challenge now is to try and write an answer in 10 minutes to the question, describe judicial controls on delegated legislation.